Okay, so do you have the math skills to figure out what this mystery number is? And I'm talking about this number right here where this uh, question mark is at. Uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and go over this problem so there's no confusion. So what we have here is the square root of 100 divided by 64, and that's equal to 55 over this mystery number. And the objective of this problem is to find this number. Now, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to thoroughly explain this problem. Uh, kind of embedded in this problem is some very important uh, math concepts that all of you out there should be um, familiar with. And if you don't understand this problem, by the time you finish with this video, you'll be like, wow, this was so easy. But uh, anyways, I'm going to get to all that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the answer is. By the way, if you feel like you want to use a calculator, go ahead and use a calculator. But uh, let's go ahead and see what this mystery number is. In fact, the correct answer is 44. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you said, yes, indeed, I got this right, well, we must celebrate your success by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you still are a certified professional expert in the area of solving a proportion with square roots. Now, uh, when you tell your family that, they'll be like, I have no idea uh, what that means, but it sounds pretty cool. Matter of fact, I think you have a bright future. I'm going to take you out to dinner. All right, so all jokes aside, if you're like totally lost uh, in this problem, this is not that difficult. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And we're going to be covering some pretty basic uh, um, math concepts, but just because they're basic doesn't mean they're not uh, important. And I think that's uh, kind of a, a misnomer in mathematics. Like, ah, people want to skip over the foundations or the basics. They're like, yeah, yeah, I just want to get to the good stuff. Well, you got to get those uh, strong foundations uh, down because they'll just con they continue to be used throughout all of mathematics. So, what am I talking about? Well, you'll see as we kind of get into this uh, problem. Now, uh, this problem has a few different ways we can think about it. Now, there's not one specific approach you could, um, you know, you have to take to solve this problem. Let me just say that, okay? There's uh, all kinds of different kind of ways that you could use to uh, figure this problem out. But I'm going to kind of uh, go in this approach, okay? So if, in other words, if you got the right answer, but you did, it, you did it in a different way, that's fantastic. But the first thing I'm going to address is this right here. We have the square root of 100 over 64. And some of you might be uh, thinking to yourself, well, I know what the square root of 100 is by itself. And I know what the square root of 64 is by itself, right? But we have this big square root. So I'm going to go ahead and address this right here because this is going to make our problem easier. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, the square root of a fraction, okay, you notice here we have one big square root symbol of 100 over 64. Well, there is something uh, in mathematics uh, that basically allows us to take one big square root, like the square root of fraction, and break it up into two individual square roots. And this is very, very useful. So here I can rewrite this problem as a square root of 100 over 64 as the square root of 100 over the square root of 64, okay? Now, what's the advantage of doing that? Well, the advantage is, is I know what the square root of 100 is. In fact, it is 10, right? And the square root of 64 is eight. Now, if you're a little bit confused about what the square root is, basically when you're taking the square root of a number, for example, like 100, what we're looking for is a number times itself that gets us back to 100, right? So 10 times 10 gets us back to 100, so therefore 10 is the square root of 100. All right, so uh, now at this point, we just took this expression, this big square root here, and we got it down to this lovely fraction 10 over eight. But anytime you're dealing with anything in mathematics, especially fractions, you always wanna make sure you write them in their simplest form. And here we can uh, reduce this fraction 10 over eight 
uh, into the fraction 5 over 4, right? Because 2 goes into 10 five times and 2 goes into 8 four times. Now, if you're already kind of, you know, a little bit shaky with basic mathematics, fractions, etc., and you just want to like kind of uh, a quick review, let me suggest it's actually turning into one of my most popular courses, my Math Foundations mini course. You'll find a link to it in the description below. It's basically like a little basic math boot camp. It's three chapters. I cover percents, decimals, fractions, order of operations, all that stuff that a lot of people think they know better than they actually do. All right, so let's take a look at where we're at here. We just went from this expression, the square root of 100 over 64, and uh, now we know that this whole thing here is equivalent to 5 over 4. All right, so what does that mean? Well, it means that our problem uh, can be kind of interpreted this way, right? So instead of this whole expression here, we're going to just replace all that with 5 over 4, and now we're looking at this problem, okay? So this is an equivalent problem and much easier. We have 5 over 4 is equal to 55 over our mystery number. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, again, uh, you may have taken a different approach. That's perfectly fine as long as you understand what you're doing and everything you're doing is kind of legally approved <laughs> in the math world, if you will. Uh, so what's going to be our next step? Well, I'm going to get to that right now. But before I do, I would like you to get to that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that and hit that notification button. This really helps me big time. This small, tiny little act, it's just like effortless, right? Just hit that little button and this button right here. It helps my YouTube channel grow. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, I'm trying to reach as many people that are interested in math or uh, need help in mathematics, and so many people struggle in math. It doesn't have to be that way. My objective is to translate all my decades of experience to try to teach math in an easy, clear, and understandable way. Okay, so many people, again, have math anxiety. It doesn't have to be that way, right? So by you subscribing, it helps that algorithm out to grow my virtual classroom. Thank you so much. Matter of fact, this is the way I look right now. Okay, so back to the problem. All right, so here we have 5 over 4 is equal to 55 over this question mark. Now, in this particular problem, the way I kind of wrote this right here, I have a question mark, okay? Now, why do I bring that up? Uh, well, because some of the, some of you might be a little bit confused with this symbol. Okay, but what is this question mark? Well, this question mark is representing some unknown value, right? Like, hey, what's the number down here? Well, really, this is an algebra problem. Okay, so instead of this question mark, we're going to use uh, something like x. Okay, we're going to use a variable because things like x, y, z, a, b, c. Uh, generally, lowercase letters doesn't have to be this way. I'm oh, sorry, it doesn't always have to be lowercase letters. But in algebra, these things are uh, what we call variables. They represent a number. So instead of this uh, question mark, I'm going to use the variable x. Now, could I use the symbol, this question mark here? Yes, I could. But uh, you're, you know, that's going to be kind of confusing because we typically don't use question marks as, uh, you know, as part of solving equations. In other words, we don't have five question mark plus two is equal to three, right? So uh, anyways, so I'm going to replace this question mark with uh, X because it represents, again, an unknown value, I, uh, unknown value excuse me. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to use a variable. And when we use the, a variable like X, we have now turned this into uh, an algebra problem, okay? All right, now this is really, really, really important because at this point, I have a lovely algebra problem. Now, some of you might be saying, well, you know, why wouldn't you just give me this problem and not the original problem if this is the, you know, this problem is the same as the square root of 100 over 64? Well, it's because, you know, you need to be able to simplify, you know, these expressions into, you know, easier or more simple or simpler versions. Basically, in mathematics, now, typically in algebra, you have a big old problem. This whole big mess right here is equal to or equivalent to more simplified versions of it. Of course, the most simplest version is going to be the solution. Okay, but they're all basically equivalent uh, in terms of, you know, mathematically equivalent. Okay, so what's going on here? We have five, we have a fraction that's equal to another fraction. This is a huge, very important topic in mathematics. So here is a pop quiz for you. When you have a fraction equaling to another fraction, what is this called in math? Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a hint. It starts with a P. So what is this called? Well, hopefully 
you said, hey, that's called a proportion, okay? And that's what this is called, right? A proportion is effectively two equal fractions. Now, oftentimes, uh, when you study proportions, for those of you that are taking some sort of math course or algebra course, uh, you also study this topic of rates and ratios, okay? Hopefully, most of you have heard of this. Rates, ratios, and proportions, they kind of all go together like peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> if you will. So if you're studying proportions, you're going to be involved with uh, dealing with rates and ratios. So what are rates and what are ratios? Well, they're nothing more than fractions with units of measure. Uh, that's for a separate discussion. If you are studying proportions and rates and ratios, I have a ton of additional videos on my channel. Uh, plus, I teach this thoroughly in my algebra courses. You'll see uh, links to those in the description as well. Okay, but a proportion by definition is one fraction that's equal to another fraction, and that's what we have right here. But why do we really care if something is a proportion? Well, if something is a proportion, we can use this thing called the cross product, and this is an awesome uh, kind of property of proportions, and it makes uh, things very easy to solve. So let me go ahead and show you a basic example here. So here are two equal fractions, right? Now I'm just picking uh, these fractions here. One half is equal to seven over 14. I could use five over 10. I could use any uh, two uh, equivalent fractions. So again, this is a proportion, right? This fraction is equal to this fraction, okay? Now, you know, of course, they're, we're using different numbers, but uh, they um, represent the same value, right? So this value is equal to this value. Now, again, this is a proportion by definition, two equal fractions. So that means we can use something called the cross product. The cross product is always true when you have a proportion, right? Cross product, I'll write this out right here. And this is an extremely important property of proportions. Now, it's not the only property of proportions. There are others, and you'll learn that in more, yeah, kind of more advanced math. They're not uh, overly difficult, but really, if you understand the cross product, you should be able to solve um, all proportion type of prompts. Okay, so here is what the cross product is. So first of all, let's just read this word, cross. What are, I mean, are we talking about crisscross? Yes, <laughs> that's basically what we're talking about. And product means what? Multiplication, correct? So here, if we multiply across, so we're going to multiply this 14 times 1, right? So our 1 times 14 is this value, and that's going to be equal to this times this. Okay, we multiply across this way, uh, 2 times 7 or 7 times 2. You can see 7 times 2 is 14, and 1 times 14 is 14. The cross product is always true, okay? So when you have a proportion, Again, by uh, definition, two equal fractions, the cross product is always true. And we can use the cross product to solve all sorts of proportion problems. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. We have 5 over 4 is equal to 55 over x. We're like, oh, yes, that Mr. YouTube math man, uh, he told me uh, two equal fractions are a proportion. I can use a cross product. And you're like, yep, that is what you want to be doing. Again, not the only way you could think about this problem, but I think uh, uh, you know this is a great problem to highlight these very important concepts in math. So let's go ahead and use the cross product to solve for this unknown value x. Okay, so it's going to be x times five is five x, and then four times fifty-five. I'll write this like this. Okay, I'm going to make another point here in a second. So just make sure we understand the cross product. Right, five times x is five x. 4 times 55 will be 4 times 55. Now, instead of getting my calculator out or just doing this in my, you know, on a piece of paper, uh, some of you might rush and be like, okay, 4 times 55, I'm going to do that. That's 220. Well, not so fast, okay? Uh, when you're dealing with equations and whatnot, uh, or just in mathematics in general, before you multiply products and things, hold off because there might be a nice opportunity to simplify. In other words, I may not be able. I may not have to do this multiplication problem as it is. Okay. Well, what uh, you know, you might be saying, well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to show you that right now. Okay. So instead of multiplying and getting four times 55 is 220, let's just keep the problem this way. 5x is equal to four times 55. Now, the reason I want to do that is to solve for x in this particular equation. All I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by five. Okay. So I got to figure out what this is. Okay. Now, if I went ahead and be like, okay, this is 220, then I got to divide by 5. You know, you're kind of taking the long road to get the right answer. 
So what I mean is the following. Okay, so we know that X, the solution, is 4 times 55 over 5. Hopefully, okay, for those of you that are up to speed on simplifying and reducing uh, fractions, you can see that 55 is the same thing as 5 times 11. Okay, so I have a 5 down here and a 5 up, uh, over here. I could cross cancel these like, like factors, right? Or, or 5 goes into 55 11 times. So this just leaves me with the um, uh, problem 4 times 11, and most of us can do that in our brain, which of course is 44. Okay, so I covered a lot of territory here. Um, again, um, there could have been different paths to get to the solution, but uh, this particular route that I took to explain this problem you know, gave me an opportunity to highlight some important properties of square roots that come in very handy, and of course proportions, which are a huge part of mathematics. You got to understand proportions if you are, you know, looking to get back into math or you're studying math. You know, they're pretty much everywhere. So hopefully you're like, yes, indeed, I understand this little problem. Thank you so much, Mr. YouTube ma Math Man. <laughs> well, I have to thank you for watching my videos. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.